Today I want to talk about something super important, the implied volatility. If you've been trading options for a while, I'm sure that you must have heard about the implied volatility. However, it might be quite a complicated subject for some, that's why I wanted to make this video to really explain what is the implied volatility and how you can use it to your own advantage. And I'm going to give you examples and show you on my trading platform how the implied volatility works so it's really clear for you, so you can really make the best out of this video. But before diving into this video, if at any point you find this video interesting or helpful and you actually learn something don't hesitate to subscribe to my channel and liking this video that's the best way to let me know after that in my analytics that you actually like this video and that you like to see more videos where i explain certain concepts like for example the implied volatility so first of all we're going to define the implied volatility what it is what it actually refers to then we're going to talk about what are the driving forces that are making the implied volatility change we're going to see how it all works together and you're going to see with examples that it's actually not that hard and then i'll share with you some tips on how you can use the implied volatility so as to know when you should buy or sell options. But first of all, let's start with what is the implied volatility. The implied volatility represents the expected move of a stock as implied by its options. That's why we say implied volatility, because the options are implying that we expect a certain movement for a stock. And I'm going to give you some examples so it's completely clear. Let's take two ETFs. XLF and GDX. And that's interesting because they are both priced around the same price per share. They're around $36, $37 per share. And if we take the same put option in the same expiration, around the same delta, what we see is the following. The 36 put on GDX is priced around 72 cents, while the same put for XLF is priced around 52 cents. And if we look at the corresponding implied volatility for the different puts that we've seen for XLF and GDX, we see that the implied volatility for the put on GDX is of 32%, while the implied volatility for the put on XLF is of 20%. So basically, we have two ETFs, XLF and GDX, they are priced around the same price per share, they're around $37, $36 per share. We go into the same expiration, we take approximately the same put in terms of distance from the current stock price, and what we see is that one is priced around $0.76 cents and the other one is at $0.52. Cents. And if we look at the implied volatility, GDX has a much higher implied volatility than XLF. 32% implied volatility for the put on GDX and 20% implied volatility for the put on XLF. Meaning that the higher the implied volatility, the more expensive the options for the stock. And that's why you can see in our example with GDX and XLF that actually GDX has a higher implied volatility. And so you can see that by the option price. You see that it's more expensive than the option on XLF, which has a lower implied volatility. So what does that mean? Well, it means that the option price and the implied volatility are very much correlated. We don't need to go too much into the details on how the implied volatility is calculated, but to make it really simple, the more expensive an option, the higher the implied volatility, and the cheaper an option, the lower the implied volatility. So it makes sense if we compare, for example, GDF and XLF, and we try to look at basically the same put options, but just on the two different stocks. If one has a higher implied volatility, then you will have a more expensive option compared to, for example, XLF, which has a lower implied volatility and so a lower or cheaper option. And now that you understand this relationship between the implied volatility and option prices, meaning if option prices get more expensive, then the implied volatility will go up and if option prices get cheaper, then the implied volatility will go down. Let's look at what is actually driving the implied volatility to change over time. What are the driving forces behind this? If option buyers are willing to pay more for a certain option, then that same option is going to get more expensive in price. And on the opposite, if option buyers are not willing to pay a certain price for an option, they are not willing to pay that expensive for an option, then what happens to the price of that option is going to decrease. And all of this is based on risk. If an option, if it's almost sure that there is going to be a crash that is going to happen, then the put options are going to get a lot more expensive because we know that a crash is going to happen and the implied volatility is going to rise also. That's why when option buyers are willing to pay more for an option, then that same option is going to increase in price and vice versa. And one very good example, because I know it's always clear with examples, one very good example of that is with earnings. So basically every quarter publicly traded companies are going to release how much money they earn during during the last quarter and th those are called earning announcements and it's basically happening every quarter for all the publicly traded companies and what happens during this time is that we tend to see option prices getting higher up to the earning announcement and then suddenly dropping right after the earning announcements but why am i talking about this well because if we look at the implied volatility 
before an earning announcement and right after, you're going to see that the implied volatility rises slowly but surely, and then right after the earning announcement, it just drops. That's what we call the IV crush. I'm not sure if you've already heard the IV crush. This is quite a famous word in the option trading community. And let me show you in Thinkorswim exactly what is that IV crush, because that exactly refers to this relationship between option prices and the implied volatility. So now we are in the Thinkorswim platform, and I want to show you this, what we call IV crush. And basically what you have in front of you is all of this. So you have the chart for the stock CVS and under you have the implied volatility. So you see this blue line. So this is basically representing the implied volatility for the stock CVS. And what you see within those red phone and this um, blue bulb and what I'm putting within those rectangles, those are the earning announcements. So you're basically that there are like four of them per year. It's normal once per quarter. And what we see, if we look at the same time at the implied volatility for the corresponding time, you see that in this, for example, example, you see that the implied volatility right after the earning announcement just dropped. That refers to the implied volatility crush. And that means that option prices got more expensive up to the earning announcement and right after the option prices drop suddenly. And as the implied volatility and the option prices are like, you know, brothers and sisters, meaning that if one goes up, the other one goes up. And if one falls, the other one falls. Well, that's exactly what happened. The option prices got more expensive. So you had the implied volatility rising. And directly after the earning announcement, option prices are dropping and the implied volatility is dropping too, as you can see in that example. And if we look at all the different times where there has been an earning announcement, you see that it's always the same thing. You see that there is always this implied volatility crush right after the earning announcement. You see that every time within those rectangles, you can see that the implied volatility drops right after the earning announcement. And if we look at here again, you see that it's once again the same thing. And it's not only for CVS. If you look at the majority of stocks that have the earnings, you will tend to see that same pattern repeating over and over. But now that we understand this, now that we understand that option prices and the implied volatility, they really are working hands in hands. If one rises, the other one rises and vice versa. Versa. How does that help us? Well, if we know that the implied volatility, for example, when it rises, it means that option prices are rising. Is there a way that we can maybe actually trade that? Well, there is. And that's what actually a lot of people are doing and myself included. When we basically see that the implied volatility is very high, it's a good opportunity maybe to sell options and vice versa. If you see that a stock has very, very low implied volatility, it means that it has very cheap options. Maybe it's a good opportunity to buy them. But there's actually something more than this that I actually want to talk about because this is so important. If I show you two stocks, let's say, for example, Wells Fargo and Bank of America, they're priced around the same price per share. They're around $42 per share. So that's why I chose them because they're mostly the same price. If I tell you that Wells Fargo has an implied volatility of, let's say, 30%, and Bank of America has an implied volatility of 40%. Based on what we talked about earlier, meaning that if option prices increase, then it means that the implied volatility will also rise and vice versa. In that case, which stock has the most expensive options? Well, based on what we know, if Bank of America has an implied volatility of 40% and Wells Fargo an implied volatility of 30%, then in that case, it's Bank of America that has the most expensive options. Technically, it's right. If both stocks have the same type of prices, meaning they are both priced around $42 per share. And if we look at just comparing the implied volatility, in that case, Bank of America has more expensive options because the implied volatility is higher. However, let me ask you this. How do you know if the implied volatility, let's say for Bank of America, is 40% actually quite low? Maybe the implied volatility for Bank of America usually is around, let's say, 70%, and now it dropped to 40%. And in that case, it would mean that based on what happened in the past, based on the average of 70%, 40% right now, implied volatility for Bank of America is actually quite low if we take what happened in the past into account. If we look at the average implied volatility, well, in that case, Bank of America with its implied volatility of 40% isn't actually quite high. It's actually quite low based on what happened in the past. And maybe it's the same thing for Wells Fargo too. Maybe now it has an implied volatility of 30%, which is 
technically lower than the Bank of America's implied volatility. But maybe the implied volatility of 30% for Wells Fargo is actually quite high because maybe in average is going to have an implied volatility of let's say 10% and now it rose to 30%, which is actually quite high if you take into account what happened in the past for Wells Fargo. So the problem that we're facing now, and that's something that is very, very important to understand is that it's hard to compare implied volatility of a stock to another stock's implied volatility because you need to take into account the average implied volatility for the respective stocks to try to compare apples to apples. Because if you just compare the implied volatility of one stock to the other, well, who knows what happened in the past for those respective stocks. Maybe as in our example with Wells Fargo and Bank of America, maybe the average implied volatility is higher or lower, making the current implied volatility cheaper or more expensive based on what happened in the past. So we need to be able to have a way to find that out. But do we? And yes, we do. That's why I was making that big and long explanation. That's to drive you there. That's to show you that we actually have a way to know how was the implied volatility in the past for that stock. And then we are able after that to compare the stocks implied volatilities together so we can actually compare apples to apples. And that's called the implied volatility percentile. Basically, to make it very, very simple, there's nothing crazy about this. The implied volatility percentile looks at the implied volatility in our example of Wells Fargo. It counts the implied volatility over the past 12 months, over the past year, and it ranks the current implied volatility compared to what happened in the past year. For example, if Wells Fargo has an implied volatility percentile of 20% right now, it means that the current implied volatility for Wells Fargo has been higher than what happened in the past only 20% of the time over the past year. In other words, the lower the implied volatility percentile, the cheaper the options historically, or at least compared to what happened in the past year. And the higher the implied volatility percentile, the more expensive the options are compared to what happened in the past year. And thanks to that tool, now we are able to compare apples to apples because now we are able to take into account what happened in the past for that stock and try to compare it to another stock also taking into account what happened in the past year. So now we have a real objective view on the implied volatility and we can compare them together. Because now if we for example said that the implied volatility percentile for Wells Fargo is of let's say 70% while the implied volatility percentile for Bank of America is of, let's say, 10%. Well, even though the implied volatility, the numbers, were higher for, for example, Bank of America, who had an implied volatility of 40%, well, now with the implied volatility percentile, we know that Wells Fargo, the implied volatility for Wells Fargo now is actually quite high compared to what happened in the past year. Bank of America's implied volatility is actually quite low compared to what happened in the past year. So now we can actually compare them together and it makes sense to compare them together because we take into account what happened in the past year. I hope it makes sense. So if you had to buy an option between the two, for example, between Wells Fargo and Bank of America, you would rather go for Bank of America because we know that based on what happened in the past, the implied volatility for Bank of America right now is quite low, even though the implied volatility, the number, is higher for Bank of America compared to Wells Fargo. But because we know what happened in the past year, it makes more sense to buy an option on Bank of America because it has cheaper options compared to what happened in the past. But I already hear you coming. How do you know where is that implied volatility percentile? How do we find that number? Well, your boy knows exactly what you were going to ask. So I wanted to show you a website that basically shows the implied volatility percentile and that can help you compare those between each other. So the website is called Market Chemistry the link of that website will be in the description of the video. When you click on the link, you will arrive on that page. So basically, let's imagine that you're trying to find some good options, some cheap options to buy so you can make a nice profit. And you hesitate between two stocks like in our example of Wells Fargo and Bank of America. Well, what you would do in that case is that you would go into the search bar at the top right hand corner and let's say that you tap Wells Fargo you would arrive after that into the page where you see all of the information for Wells Fargo and where you would go is you would go into that category where it's basically shown volatility. Let's, let me just move that. 
if you see that volatility column, you would click on it and then you would click on implied volatility. Where is it bringing you? Well, basically now we arrive on the implied volatility page for Wells Fargo. And what you can see directly in the first line is the Wells Fargo IV percentile rank. And if we look at, it says that its implied volatility is of 28, which is in the 6th percentile rank, which means that 6% of the time the IV was lower in the last year than the current level. And it means basically that, as I said, the lower the IV percentile, the cheaper the option compared to what happened in the past year. In other words, right now, Wells Fargo options with an IV percentile of 6%, it is very, very cheap. Wells Fargo's options are very cheap. And if we look now at Bank of America, let's say, let's try to compare the two. So you go into the search bar, and once again, you go into the implied volatility. What we see is that Bank of America's implied volatility is of 25%, which is in the fourth percentile rank. It means that basically 4% of the time, the IV was lower in the last year than the current level. Meaning that once again, Bank of America's options are very, very cheap. But if you compare the two, it means that Wells Fargo, with its implied volatility percentile of 6%, has a bit more expensive options than Bank of America compared to what happened in the past. So you see that now it gets actually quite interesting because now we're comparing apples to apples and you can know what is actually cheap and what is actually expensive taking into account what happened in the past. After that, if you want to, for example, not use a website and if you wanted to have it directly into your broker, Testyworks actually offers this functionality. If we go, for example, into Testyworks and this is the page where, for example, I've put a watch list, you can see that there is a filter IV percentile and if you click on it, you can filter the stocks by the IV percentile. It means that now we are only seeing, for example, the stocks with the most expensive options first, or if you want to see the stocks with the cheapest options first you can for example now bp i know that within my watch list bp has the cheapest options compared to everything else and it's taking into account what happened in the past and that's why it's really really amazing about this tool because now you can really compare very quickly everything together and see which stock has the cheapest options if that's what you want to see or the most expensive options taking into account what happened in the past and what's very very interesting to see also is that you can see that the column next to it so you see that you have the IV percentile on the right and then you have the implied volatility index IDX means index what you can see is that there are plenty of different implied volatilities and you see that for example oxy has an implied volatility index of 57 percent and still it has an iv percentile of 3.8 percent while gold for example has a lower implied volatility index but has a higher implied volatility percentile you know so you see that it's very important to take into account the implied volatility percentile because otherwise you're not comparing apples to apples you're comparing an implied volatility of a stock to another without taking into account what was the average in the past what happened in the past and that can cause you to lose money and that's personally what made me lose money in the beginning because at first I was looking at two stocks and I was just comparing the two implied volatilities but without taking into account what happened in the past you, you don't really know if the implied volatility currently is actually high or low for that particular stock you need to look at what happened in the past that's why the implied volatility percentile is honestly a life-saving indicator because it can really help you know what is cheap and what is expensive so if you like to buy options then you'd rather go for very low implied volatility percentile stocks for example if you want to buy options then uh, you might want to go for bp because we know that historically compared to all of the stocks it has the cheapest options taking into account what happened in the past so i hope this video was insightful and you learned a bit about the implied volatility how it works and also the implied volatility percentile and how it can help you make better informed decisions when you're trying to see which options to buy or which option to sell if you have any questions i'd love to hear your questions or your comments so don't stay to comment it below. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Please make good and informed decisions. I'll see you in the next video. And in the meantime, I wish you all the best.